Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Frederick de Grey from H2O Innovation. How are you? I'm excellent. Yourself, Tracy? Well, of course you're excellent. I was reading your 2015 year ends and you're up 40 percent to nearly 50 million in revenue last year. Is that correct? That's correct. It's pretty sustained growth over the year, uh, both exclusively organically, coming from our project business, 60 uh, percent growth in our project business only, and then 18 percent from the specialty products and service group as well. Now you just had more good news this last week, a deal with Clear Logics. That's correct. We just acquired a new technology, a new company based in the U.S. Uh, around Denver. Um, actually, it complements very nicely our project business. So it's a technology that will differentiate the project business. It's a controller that allows us to measure the proper level of coagulant chemicals we need to add into a water uh, solution to avoid premature falling of our membrane. So it both complements the, the business, the project business, as well as expand our chemical offering. Now, I believe I read in the Clear Logics news release that you managed to do this with debt financing from a bank and you haven't diluted the, sh the That's shares. Correct. This is something that we're pretty proud of. I mean, after 15 years building this company and now being able to, to acquire and bolt on new acquisition without diluting the shareholders. So this is an accomplishment because it will be extremely accurate. Obviously, we're adding about 1 to 1.5 million in revenues and it's a profitable uh, business as well and with no dilution impact, as you said, financed through a senior debt. Well, the part I heard is that uh, this will increase revenue. Is that correct? That's correct. And recurrent revenues as well. So that's what we like. Well, we all like recurrent revenues. So can you talk a little bit more about how this is going to work? Well, once the company integrated, I mean, you, they buy the controller, they buy the control panel, and then, you know, they're going to buy the specialty chemicals as well that will remain o during the operation. So uh, there's a portion that is a one-off, the, the project uh, side of it, but then the specialty chemical is a recurrent revenue. So it complements nicely the business. Well, Dr. Duchesne at Investor Intel called your, your technology revolutionary, grand, groundbreaking, this membrane filter system. Can you give our audience a bit of an overview? Well, the membrane, membrane systems, membrane technologies have been around now for uh, more sustainably for about 15 years now. Um, essentially, what's different and what's new in H2O is, is the way we're integrating these membranes into an open source platform. So our true differentiator um, in that in that business sector in the technology of membranes is that we're designing platform allowing to integrate all these different kinds of, of modules so that we compete with the proprietary um, uh, technologies and providing open access to our customer allowing them to change the membranes um, after the five years or seven years of operations and go to the market and select these best best, best membranes available well, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot here because you have had so much news just in the last quarter. And I know one that stood out for me was uh, securing uh, a deal with the, with the fourth largest purification plant in, in the world in California. There's a couple of plants we secured in California lately and uh, in Cosbad area and uh, Sweetwater authorities in southern, uh, south of San Diego. So all this area obviously is highly impacted by the, by the drought. Um, so yes, it was a couple of interesting projects we secured uh, for both drinking water application and water reuse application as well. So, so what do you think is your uh, biggest piece of news in, say, the last quarter? Well, growing the backlog itself is, is always something nice to see. I mean, it, we're replenishing in, uh, the backlog. Uh, we still feel sustained growth, uh, particularly com coming from the U.S. Uh, yes, driven by some, 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 some ground factor some drought factor, but also the infrastructure market itself is, is growing uh, pretty nicely in the U.S. So a uh, combination of, of these two catalysts plus our new technology we release uh, for the FiberFlex and this open platform I was just talking about are, are two main reasons that make me believe that I think we have g good growth ahead of us. For all of us shareholders out there, can you tell us what we should anticipate? Normally I ask for two quarters, but you're moving so fast. What should we expect this quarter? Yeah, so today what we're trying to do is to continue to build an organization. Um, we can rely on two pillars as we speak today. The first one being the project business that represents 60% of our revenues. Um, the second one we build through the years, specialty products and services representing 40% of our revenues, bringing the, the recurrent side of revenue of the business. What we're trying to do now is to, is to add a third pillar being the operating and maintenance. 
So be able to provide the system, be able to provide the specialty consumables, chemicals, as well as providing solutions to operate these systems on the long term. And that might be on the look for us in, in terms of additional growth, both organically but also through acquisition. Uh, we keep talking about growth here. I noticed you have a very talented new CFO, a new COO, very impressive backgrounds. How are you handling your growth, Frederick? This is a real challenge for CEOs. It is a challenge. I have to say that uh, these two uh, these two guys have been uh, with the organization now for a long time with us. Uh, both Mark and Guillaume um, were handling key position uh, before as well in the organization. I think it's a natural step for us to to see them growth in, in into these roles of CFO and COO. Uh, the organization has gained maturity right now. Uh, we want to be clear for our own organization so that the role are, are, are not confusing, but also for the external to make sure that. Uh, people understand how we're building the organization not as much as what we are today but where we want to be for the future and yes indeed it, it is challenging to to deal with such growth i mean we added this year about 35 people in the organization uh, we're a total of 175 employees across the united states and canada so it is challenging but i prefer to have these kind of challenges well frederick as always it's a pleasure to get an update on h2o innovation well thank you very much